All right, guys, we're out here at uh, US 131 in uh, Martin, Michigan. First time I've been to this track. It's a pretty nice, uh, nice facility they have here. So this is our first run. Someone oiled down the track at the very beginning, and it took a couple hours to get it cleaned up. So we've been sitting in the lanes for hours now, but we're almost up there now. So we're getting close. Should be running here shortly. So yeah, um, so yeah, we put we put the nitrous on there. We had that the bottle, all the lines, the solenoids, all that shit already, um, but we didn't have a, a you know forty one fifty plate. So I just bought a, um, it's basically a Zex perimeter plate, but it's made by uh, I forget the name of the place. Proform, I don't know. It's it's a it's a cheaper copy of it basically. Um, the Zex one's like two hundred dollars. Uh, and I got this one for like, I think it was 60 or something. So, you know, a quarter of the price basically. So, uh, you know, I threw that on there. Sorry guys. I threw that on there. Um, just for the fun of it. Fuck, why not? You know? All right. So what we plan on doing with this motor is, uh, like I said, in, in stock form with stock chambers on the head, stock, uh, you know, piston to deck height. Um, it comes out to, uh, 11 to 1 or 11.1 to 1. Um, so what I plan on doing is taking the combustion chamber on the heads down to, I got this, I got the numbers wrote down, but I think it's 47 or 48 cc. So they'll deck the heads down to make the chamber smaller, get it down to about 47 cc's, and then deck the block to bring the pistons up level with the block. So it'll be a zero deck block, um, and then running a, uh, 20, I think it's 28 thousandths compressed thickness head gasket will get us right around 12 and a half to one. Now I know you guys are probably thinking, what the, you know, you're freaking crazy. You're gonna, you're gonna grenade that thing. That's way too high compression. Well, you know, back in the old days, uh, old school thought with old school technology, um, old school materials, you know, you didn't want to go that high, you know. You know, ten and a half to one was considered crazy um, on a turbo motor, and you know nowadays ten and a half to one is you know that's an everyday type deal. You, you know, you run ten and a half to one in a junkyard motor or something, throw a set of pistons in it, raise the compression up, get ten and a half to one, and put twenty five pounds of boost on it, and they'll live all day. Um, you know, technology has come a long way, and the main thing is the fuel. You know, you got to use the right fuel. If you're going to try to push them that far, um, you can't be running this on 93 octane or even, you know, pump E85 is probably not a good idea um, if you plan on putting a ton of boost into it at that high of a compression ratio. Um, so what we plan on doing, like I said, is we're going to bump that up to 12 and a half ish right around that area to one. And then we're going to swap the car over to methanol. Um, and to do that, it, you know, it's going to take some parts to do that. Obviously, the pumps, the fuel pumps that I have are not going to cut it. They're not going to flow nearly enough fuel. So, we'll, uh, you know, I'm kind of going back and forth on whether to get, like, the 10-gallon per minute um, brushless air motive pump. Um, I'd like to get away from, uh, you know, an electric pumps because, you know, brushless pumps have come a long ways um, over the old school brushed pumps that, you know, you couldn't run them for very long, they'd overheat, they'd fail, uh, constantly having problems with them. You know, the brushless technology has changed that quite a bit, but I want to get away from the load on the charging system and the battery, because that's another thing that we're going to do this over this winter is get rid of the 12 volt battery and alternator, because the alternator is starting to go out. Um, I forgot to mention that in my data logs, my uh, voltage just starts to drop off the higher the RPM I go. Um, you know, and you can do things with smaller pulleys to help try to make them live, but, you know, you put a, or excuse me, a bigger pulley to help help them try to live. But, you know, the bigger pulley you put on there, the less amperage you get at idle. And when you got, you know, two field pumps, two cooling fans, 
transbrake solenoids, a nitrous solenoid, um, all the eight injectors, eight coils, all the electronics in the car. Um, if you got lights on, you know, you got a lot of load on that battery. So, uh, you know, if I can get rid of the electric fuel pumps and not 40, 50 amps off the system, that's great. So anyways, we plan on going, what I was getting to is we plan on going and putting a 16 volt system in it, put a 16 volt battery, get rid of the alternator, because really that's the only thing that's driving, being driven uh, by the crankshaft, by the belt, um, is the alternator and then the water pump, and we'll get to the, the water pump deal um, in a minute. But if I get rid of the alternator, then I really don't have to run a belt. Um, and then we also have 16 volts, which everything's going to work better. Uh, on 16 volts compared to 12. Um, you know, your injectors, your coils, all are going to have uh, better functionality with the more voltage. Um, your starter is going to crank a hell of a lot faster than, than, than on 12 volts. You know, and just all that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a pain in the ass. But th this has turned into a track only deal. It's never going to be driven on the street. Um, and it'll have to be, you know, charged in between rounds, in between runs at the track. Um, but I think uh, the pluses of going to a 16 volt deal, get rid of all the electronics, you know, the electric fuel pumps and, and them type of loads, um, it's, it's worth the hassle. Um, so we will have to install a mechanical fuel pump um, that's going to be driven off a belt. And more than likely, uh, we'll mount the pump up front and put a uh, a small, you know, like a three, maybe four gallon fuel cell somewhere up front and have it draw from there. I could use the fuel cell that I got back here and run a cable drive to the back um, and mount the pump out back. But, you know, that's more money, more hassle, running lines that far up in front and running the cable all the way back here, more maintenance on the cable drive. And people run them and have great luck with them. You know, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just uh, in my certain, my, my situation, it's just for me, it's just easier to uh, mount it directly on a motor plate up front and uh, have a cell right up front that they can draw from and, uh, you know, be done with it. To do that, we'll probably have to, you know, chop off the front half, you know, above the, uh, or in front of the uh, um, shock towers, strut towers, and, uh, you know, run tubes there and, tu and put a tube tubular front end kit on it um, to get the room that we need to do that but that's what we'll probably end up doing is just make make it uh, a lot easier to work on it to get in there in the engine bay and not be so cramped um what else the injectors um <clears throat> on methanol turbocharged you know it's I got 210 pound or 2200 cc injectors in it which is way more injector than we need right now on E85. But um, once on methanol, we're probably gonna have to run quite a bit of base pressure uh, to, to get it to have enough fuel uh, you know, for what we're trying to do. More than likely, we'll have to go with a second set of uh, 210s. And uh, that way we'll have uh, you know, more fuel than we'll ever need. The single set of two tens will get us pretty far with enough base pressure, um, and you know a mechanical pump can put out quite a bit of base pressure. Uh, you can you can really you can really crank them up and get a lot of pressure out of them if you need it. So um, you know if we need it, we can crank the base pressure up to 75 or 80 80 psi and get you know get them injectors to flow. You know like a 320 pound injector. Is about the highest they're rated for uh, from the specs that I've been able to find. So, um, you know, we can make it work. You can make quite a bit of horsepower on methanol on a, a force reduction application on a single set of two tens. Um, but you got to make sure that everything's, you know, on the up and up. You're, you're not missing anything, and because uh, you could hurt something pretty quick if uh, you run out of fuel. So, um, but anyway, so that's the game plan. That's what we're going to do convert to methanol, build this. Uh, 302 stroker, high compression, and a lot of boost. So uh, that's the game plan. And then, like I said, we got we got the the giggle gas in the back if we want to really uh, get crazy and mess around. Um, 
but so yeah, that's that's the game plan, guys, and that's kind of the reason it's still raining out there. That's kind of the reason we haven't been, I haven't made any videos because I haven't really done a whole lot um, other than put the put the nitrous kit on it and uh, you know do that exhaust up there. Um, but other than that, really haven't done much. I do have a clip from uh, the run at uh, US 131, or, or a portion of it. For whatever reason, the SD card that I got is a pile of shit. Or the camera. I think it's the SD card, but I'm not 100% sure. Because um, it will it cuts the clips. Depending on the length of them, it cuts them up into blocks. And uh, more times than not, multiple you know, a couple of the blocks will be corrupted. You can't get the, the footage off of them. Or you'll get a part of it, you know. If it's a, a minute long clip, you might get 30 seconds of it or some shit. So I, don't, I need to get a different one and try it. Hopefully it is just an SD card and it's not something to do with the camera. All right, guys, I don't know if you, you may or may not know about these, but uh, these style, if I can get to focus on this. The style uh, pinch clamps. Let me pull one out of the package. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I get them. Oh. These style uh, pinch clamps that you uh, use the style. Uh, Set of pliers to uh, you know clamp different uh, hoses on or whatever. You slide it over the hose and then you, you use these pliers and you, and you squeeze it and it crimps it around there and it crimps them really good. So uh, you know you got to cut them off after you uh, if you want to remove them. Um, that's what I'm using. I bought a set off Amazon for cheap and it comes with all different sizes of clamps, a ton of them. Um, for cheap and uh, you know they work pretty good so that's what I'm using here to you know just a little extra added security on these bar fittings to uh, make sure they don't come off so we will go ahead and uh, run this over to uh, the intake here Sure you put your, your clamp on before you uh, put the hose on. Made that mistake numerous times. And just uh, slide it over your barb or your fitting or whatever you're using. I put them on uh, on the uh, push lock hoses or whatever. If it's going to have a fluid in it. You know, like fuel or transmission fluid, for instance. Like I should have done. I should have had these. I, this I bought these because of that transmission line that came apart. Um, you know, I bought this kit so that, that uh, when I put it back together, I could put these clamps on it, and that way I know they're not going to come off. But anyways, once you get them on there, let me make sure you guys can see. Okay, so you got it on there, right? And then uh, what you do is you get it, you turn it till it, uh, let me get it twisted to the right spot so I can get to it. Um, you get it twisted so that that flat clamp portion of it is, you know, accessible so you can get your pliers on it. And then you just open them up. Try to at least. Try to do this one-handed. Um, still get you guys a shot while I do it. See if I can grab it. There we go. Got it. So, uh, can you see it? Of course, the screen goes off. Hopefully, you guys can see this. You know, you just grab it like this and uh, squeeze it. You know, give it a nice. Tight squeeze and it'll, um, you know, I can't see the damn light's terrible over here. 
uh, then it, it crimps it. So now, I mean, that, that some bitch ain't coming off unless you cut this, uh, cut this off. If you do have to remove this hose, just take a pair of side cutters and, uh, and snip, just kind of nipple, it kind of makes a little nipple when you, when you crimp it. And then when, when you need to remove it, you can just, you know, cut it with a pair of dikes and it'll, it'll break the towel off and then you can remove the hose. Um, so they also, they do have little tabs on them that you can pop and it'll free them up so you can uh, move them, remove them. But I find it easier just to snip them off with a, a pair of side cutters and, and, you know, move on. So, so anyways, I got the new hose on there that way, uh, we don't have an issue with this popping off. Now I got to get, take off this old hose and, uh, um, and put a plug in there because I don't need that. You know, this can't be open now because I'm not going to be using this port. So I need to get another, uh, I believe they're eighth inch pipe plugs. Um, so I'll get an eighth inch pipe plug and put it in there and seal that off until I need it or whatever. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it off here, guys. That's all I'm going to do today. Uh, and once we get started on. Uh, you know doing other stuff we'll make sure we get videos of it but the next video will hopefully be a track video and uh yeah so we'll go from there guys i appreciate you guys watching if you like it if you like the mod motor content mustang content or whatever or if you just like you know drag racing and and trying to go fast and doing all the stuff that you know yourself at home um you know go ahead and subscribe and and uh we'll see you on the next one